Welcome to Trade the Trend, a weekly video about where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the S&P 500. I'm going to cover the ASX 200 as well as copper, gold, oil and uranium in a separate video. I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. As always, everything today is general commentary only, it doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all that said, let's get into our first chart. So I have the S&P 500 up here on the, the screen and we have another new all-time high just uh, recorded on Thursday. But I think the big question for a lot of people now is they're wondering, is this a start of a new bullish phase or is it going to prove to be a false break that leads to, a, to another, another period of selling? Now, I think, I think the first thing we should do in these situations is to assess what is actually happening now. Not what we think could happen or not what we fear might happen, but to actually step back and get a clear understanding of the current setup. So what's this setup telling us? Well, from where I stand, from, where, from what I see, we have we've got rising moving averages. That's the first thing. I've got the 50 and the 100 day moving averages. So the moving averages are rising and price is currently above the moving averages. So that's bullish, pure, pure and simple. That's text, textbook bullishness when price is traveling above those moving averages. And it's also not stretched above the averages now, which can be a warning sign. We also have a series of, of higher highs and higher lows, and that's been the case for, for some time now. And on each of these pullbacks, there's been strong buying interest as we've come back towards the, the moving averages. So again, that's bullish price action. Now, that's not to say that the market has to go up because every bullish phase, well, that's eventually going to peak. But the odds favor that rising prices, odds favor that rising prices lead to further rising prices. And, and that's what makes a trend. That's what a trend is all about. And what I think is interesting here is the S&P 500, is hitting an all-time high at the and, and it's doing that despite the top three companies. So the top three companies at this point is Microsoft, Apple, and Nvidia. And neither of those three companies are at all-time highs, yet the SP 500 is. So for example, just looking at Nvidia, it's um yeah, it, it's reasonably below that that all-time high. You see a similar profile on those those other stocks. Together, these stocks make up about 20% of the S&P 500. So for the index, for the index to be hitting a new all-time high without these stocks participating, I think what that tells us, it tells us that the broader market is doing well. I'll show you what I mean. Let's have a look at the S&P 500 on an equal weight basis. It's an ETF which equally weights the, the 500 components of the S&P 500. And I've used this a lot, in re a lot in recent months to assess the overall state of the, the market. And I've done this because I think a healthy market requires broad participation, not just a, a narrow rally from a, from a few big tech stocks or, or the like. Really, a healthy market really does require many parts of, the, of those 500 to be, be participating. And, and I think this chart tells us a lot. So unlike the S&P 500, which has just broken to an all-time high this week, the equal weight has had a, a series of all-time highs since July. So you can see it hit a, hit a high in July, and we've had this series of all-time highs in, the, in, in just over recent months. It also has uh, the rising moving averages, so again, the 50 and the 100-day moving averages. And we can also see that on all these periods where the equal weight has come back to the moving averages, there's been strong, strong demand. I think for me that that's a sign of accumulation. When a market comes back to these rising moving averages, um, hovers and then rallies again, it's a sign of accumulation on pullbacks. I prefer, I actually do prefer the structure of of, um, of the equal weight than the S and P 500 at this point. I think it's a better gauge of the internal strength of the market. Now, I want to show you an indicator that I think can offer a lot of value at particular times, not always, but at particular times, I think it can really, really help us understand what's going on. 
And it's this one here. It's the um, percentage of S&P 500 stocks above their 100-day moving average. And it hit... Uh, and it hit 79%, or almost 80%, almost hit 80% on on Thursday, and it's trending higher. You can see it's generally been been moving upwards over the last last few months, and there's there's scope for this to continue increasing. So if we just compress this a bit, you can see that it, that it does at times get up into the into the 90s. So at 80, there is that. I think there's quite good scope for this to continue to increase. And I believe this is where the fuel for the uptrend can come from as more and more stocks participate and continue to trend above their averages, this can all help push the market higher. So I think rather than trying to pick a high in the S&P 500 or the market generally, I think that I think the play here, I think the play here coming back to the S&P 500, I think the play is, is quite simply just going with this underlying momentum and not try to be too clever, not trying to pick peaks, let the market guide us in, in where it's going. And at the moment, all those signs are pointing to odds favoring higher levels. We still, of course, need to manage risk, but I think the default position should be being long stocks. Now, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Please leave a short comment. Just, hey, thanks to the video. It just tells YouTube you're watching, you're engaging. YouTube shows other people, helps me heaps. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Now, just quickly to finish up, I want to have a quick look at the um, the Russell. Now, this is, this is of course, the, the small caps, the Russell 2000. And this is, this is a fascinating chart. What we've got, we've got, we had this large trading range that had been in place for around, around six months. Had a breakout in July, breakout only stuck for a few weeks, then we get that sharp sell-off back within the range. So you call that a false break. False break by definition, where it, where it breaks higher, then then comes then comes crashing back, and this this is often the sign of of, uh, of further weakness to come. That's what you often get when you get a false break, but that's not the case on this occasion. What we have is a Russell quickly stabilising, and now it looks like it's staying to to re-establish upward momentum. Now I want to want to um just do something with this chart which can change the way you you view it. I'm going to remove this um, this marker of the of the previous trading range. Now take that off. I want to look at this chart without without that range drawing your attention. When we do that, I think it becomes easy to see this series of rising lows that the, the Russell has had all year. And of course, rising lows are the building blocks of an uptrend. The small caps have largely been overlooked this year, but the price momentum is there. The price momentum has been there all year, despite them not really taking much, much focus. All the, all the interest has really been what the S&P 500 has been doing, all those, those um, big mega tech stocks, that's really been the focus. But as I say, the price momentum is there. It's less than 10% below its all-time high. And it's, um, I, think, I think the small caps, I think they offer an area of opportunity. And also, also I think it supports the, the, overall, the overall bullish theme that I've been talking about because it, it, it shows there's more stocks participating in this general move higher in the markets. Of course, it's not about blindly going out and buying. I'm interested in stocks that are breaking higher, stocks that are stocks that are rallying off moving averages. Also, I'm using wide trailing stops to, to manage risk. Got to manage risk, not about blindly just going in there and saying, look, buy whatever. Buy the right stocks, buy stocks with the right setups and, and manage risk accordingly. Okay, well, I think we will call that a wrap for this week. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully that's been interesting. I look forward to coming back and we'll do it all again next week. Till then, bye for now.